Hi everybody, Dr. Cobb back with you. This week we're going to talk about building stamina Z-Health style. Now if you didn't know anything about the system, we're all about efficiency and creating the results that you're after. And I tell you, one of the things that people ask, for, ask me about all the time is, hey, how can I have better endurance? How can I have better energy through my day? And so what I want to talk about today is actually this kind of big misconception that's out there in the general fitness world around something called the Tabata Protocol. Now this has been around for a long time. The actual original study was done in 1996. Uh, it was done in Japan, hence the name Tabata. Most people over time replaced it with the idea of 20 tens, uh, meaning you do 20 seconds of hard exercise followed by a 10 second rest. And in the original study, you did that seven times in a row or eight times in a row. And the reason this got really popular is this original study showed both an improvement in aerobic capacity and anaerobic capacity after a certain period of training. And this was kind of unheard of in the day. So people got really excited about it. Um, and ever since that study was first published, so now we're almost 20 years out, I constantly hear people in the fitness industry going, all right, we're going to do our intervals, we're going to do our Tabatas, we're going to do 20 tens. And while it's effective and hard, there may be a better way. So let's just talk about that. Um, the original Tabata study, and I'm going to give you a bunch of numbers, so if you want to follow along, you can write this stuff down. But in the original study, like I said, uh, the goal was they put these high-level athletes on an exercise bike, and they made them cycle really, really hard, uh, and they were cycling at what's called about 170% of VO2 max. Now, VO2 max in exercise science is basically how much oxygen you can uptake in any given period of time, and a lot of people look at it as kind of a measure of aerobic capacity. So they were pushing pretty hard, but they weren't actually maxing out in the original study because 170% is really not max effort. For most humans, max effort is around 250% of VO2 max. Um, but the problem is that they were doing 170% for 20 seconds, getting a very brief 10 second breather, and then going at it again. And from a physiologic perspective, while this is effective, most people can't actually engage high level intensity throughout that whole uh, series because it's so short, the rest periods are so short. So here's the big news and the things that we're, we're looking at. 2005, another study was published, and this is one that I want to talk about uh, because I think it's really interesting and it's powerful and it's a reminder of one of the most important things in all the exercise world, which is the level of effort that you put into something often determines the results. So in uh, 2005, another study was published and it's been repeated multiple times. And people said, hey, this Tabata protocol is cool, but is there something better? Is there something different? So in this particular uh, process, what they did is, again, they put people on exercise bikes. But instead of exercising hard for 20 seconds, resting for 10 seconds, they had these athletes go really hard. So all out maximal sprint on the bike for 30 seconds and then rest for four minutes. All right. Not 10 seconds, four minutes. And then they had them repeat that in their first two training sessions three more times. So they did a total of four 30 second sprints separated by four minutes of rest each time. And they did this for two weeks. They did six training sessions over two weeks. Now here was the crazy part. In two weeks of training, and if you actually look at the total training time, it was roughly about 16 minutes of hard exercise over two weeks. Their cycle endurance time doubled. A 100% endurance improvement in two weeks of training. Now, what was most intriguing about this is they actually compared that high intensity group to another group who was out riding a bike. Uh, and they were riding at about 80, 75, 80% intensity. So they weren't exercising super hard, but they weren't you know, just lagging it either. So kind of moderate intensity. Now, here's the comparison. Both groups got the same level of improvement over a training period. But the people that were doing moderate intensity work had to exercise about 12 hours compared to 16 minutes. So what's come out of this in the exercise literature and it's been talked a ton about, but it's still not really pushing its way out into the, the general public yet, is that the level of intensity that you bring to it really determines the, the uh, difference. But because people are people, we think that high intensity and less rest is great, and that's actually not the case. What we want to think about in building stamina most efficiently is high intensity work followed by a lot of rest. High intensity work, more rest, right? It's kind of a match made in heaven for a lot of us. Uh, so the basic protocol, what I'm going to suggest to you trying over you know, the next few weeks, is start kind of engaging with this idea of what would it feel like to do 30 seconds of pretty close to all out exercise, followed by four minutes of rest, and then do it again. Um, most of the time when I start people on these, these types of programs, 
I'm very cautious. You know, if you haven't been running, I don't want you to go run all out for 30 seconds because your legs aren't going to be ready for it. So you want to choose a safe activity. Exercise bike is usually a good place to start. Um, if you haven't had you know, cardiovascular checkup with your doctor, you might want to do that before you start pushing really hard. But the idea behind this in Z Health is start playing with doing higher intensity, uh, what most people consider aerobic style exercise, although it's not really when we're pushing that hard, followed by a lot of rest, and then just build your stamina over time. The coolest part about this is that when you follow this kind of protocol, you should notice almost immediate results. A lot of people, usually within the first week of doing this, by the time they get to the second week, they're like, yeah, this is getting a little bit easier. At the end of the second week, they're going, wow, I feel really different. So this is something I encourage. Now, we vary it over time. Uh, but if you have any questions about this, please give us a call because it's a really important, uh, like I said, kind of efficiency hack, if you will, to building better heart, better lung, better circulatory capacity, and overall better endurance to help you get through your day with more energy uh, and more stamina. So thanks for listening. I know there's a lot of stuff. Hopefully you wrote it down. If you have any questions, let us know.